Okay, guys. So I'm recording this to explain few more post test cases. But before that, uh, I will just uh, refactor this the test case which we discussed last time. So this is a post positive create new employee test case. I am trying to refactor it in the sense I'm trying to make it more dynamic. And there was one validation which was missing here that also I will put. So maybe before I start, maybe I will first give a quick walkthrough on what we did last time. So this is post positive create new employee. So I'm trying to create a new employee. This is the body text which it would, uh, I would like to send. So I have written here my name, my salary and age. This is what is required to be sent as a part of the post request. Then uh, since it's a post request, I also need to uh, send the header information with the post request. So for that I'm creating a hash map of header, hash map string of string hash map and inside this I'm only putting one key which is content type as application slash JSON and then the request specification object I am writing given base URI dot headers then uh, the response I am creating as request specification which is from here request specification dot when and in the when part I am sending the body as well and then the post and this is the end point so at this end point uh, so combination of server name and this end point this is the place where an API is hosted which takes your takes this uh, post request and creates the employee and manip manipulates it so once this statement gets executed it uh, the server is being hit with this body and this header and this information will, will go and get saved inside the database and there will be unique id will be generated that uh, id and all the information which the server is returning back will get saved inside response object now i'm creating another object called as validatable response where i am I'm using this response object and I'm applying a method called as then. Once I get this object, I will do some assertions on it. So first level of assertion which I'll do is I write here assertion one that whatever information I've sent should be returned as a part of the body. Something like when I send this, I should receive it. Okay, something is not here, something is not right. Anyway, I'll not use this example. I will just resort to this. So the point is, once you send this information via post request, what you get in return will be another JSON with the same set of information plus one more attribute called as ID. So there will be unique ID which will be generated, generated in the system and that is what the system, the API will return. So I'm just validating whatever information I've sent is also being received from it, from the API. So that is what I am checking here. So I'm checking the name, salary and age as well as I am also trying to print it. Now there will, will another be, there, there has to be another validation, which is the ID. Once I get the ID back, once I get the ID back, I would need to do a get request again just to validate if this post request is successful that means this information is now saved in the in the database i should able to i should be able to retrieve this information using its unique id and that unique id is what i am getting from here from this response and that is what i am going to fetch out and that i will use to get the to to fire a get request again to the api So this is assertion two. So what I'll do is I need to fetch the ID from the response body. So before I do it here from here, let me explain it the same thing from this postman. So previously it was not working. I figured it out the error which I was making. So the endpoint was wrong. So I've corrected corrected the endpoint now, and I am creating a new entity. Let's say Sandeep. I'll write here some salary and then age, let's say 29. And if I do ascend, 
I'm getting a response as from the server, which is status is success and the data it has created. And if you notice, there is one more additional attribute of ID here, which was not here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fetch this ID from here. And this is what I'm going to use to fire the uh, fire the query again, the fire the or hit the uh, server with a get request. And using this ID, I would like to retrieve this inf information from the server. So I'll go back here. I'll start writing. So I need to fetch the ID. Where is the ID? ID, all the information which was returned from the server is in the response object. So all this thing, all this information is in the response object. So I will use the same object called as response dot. And then I have some special method to parse the information from a JSON. So right now if you notice here, I'm writing a JSON path and I'm writing this method, which is kind of internally managing to validate that the data dot zero dot name equals Akash Tyagi. Okay, so this body and this assert that this body is responsible for validating the, the expected, validating the, sorry, validating the actual, which is coming from here with the expected. But right now we don't want exactly to, we don't want this to be happening. We via assert that what we want is we want to fetch the information. We don't want to validate it as of now. We want to fetch it. So for fetching it, we have a special method called as JSON path. So response dot JSON path, then dot will give me many methods to fetch the information out of the JSON. So I'll write JSON path dot. Then if you notice, what I need is a simple value, right? So I will use get list. If I do get list, it gives me the complete list. But right now I don't want a complete list. What I want is a single value. So I'll write get int. So if I do get int and I'll type the path here. So what is the value which I would I'm interested in? Data dot id. So I'll write here data dot id. And this has to be an int, right? Similarly, for example, if I wanted to fetch salary using this method, what I would have written is int salary is equal to response dot json path dot get a string this time because the salary is a string, right? This was an integer, but this is an string as you clearly see here. So data dot salary will give me this, right? So I will write the JSON path here like this. So I'll write here double quotes data dot salary. And this would have given me the salary. So this will give me salary. So one, th three, two, four will come inside this object. That is how basically we fetch it. So basically you have two ways to get information and validate uh, in your using rest assured. One first way is you directly use then dot assert that and then this, this method. In this, you don't have to explicitly fetch something and validate it. This body of body method itself is responsible or assert that dot body combination itself is responsible for validating the ex actual with the expected. But in this case, this specific case, I don't want to validate, validate the information as of now. What I want is to fetch the information. So for fetching the information, you need to use this method, which is JSON path. And after JSON path, you can have many options. So I'll just get give you some glimpse. So get int, get boolean, get double, get float. You can get list. You can get map. When do we use get map? Maybe perhaps you have when you want to fetch information which is which has a which can be converted to a hash map. So if I say data, or let me if I tell you how to do that, just for an example, I'll write here hash map string comma string hash map of data i'll write here response dot json path dot get sorry get map and inside this i will write here data only data why because this data is responsible for giving me in giving me this and this can be converted to hash map hash map means where we have a key value pair so this is a key this is a value so this json path which is only data will give me access to this 
data of JSON, which will be converted to a hash map. So this all will be converted to a hash map like this. Okay, fair enough. If I wanted this to be in a string format, I can do in a string format, but in that case, I will have to perhaps cast it. So I'll write here hash map string. Okay, so let me not do that for now. For now, let me keep it this way, right? So this will be converted to a string of string hash map, right? So this is how we can, I can actually convert this information into a hash map like this. Okay, uh, then we also have a method called as get list. The similar way we can also get the values in a list format. For now, I don't need it, so I'm just going to comment it out. I'll just focus on what we have, been, we have to do for this test case. So once we get the ID, even salaries we don't need, we only need ID. So now this assertion was about get request using the ID generated in previous step. Okay, so what I'll do is, uh, what is the endpoint by the way for doing the get? The endpoint for doing it is uh, this is the page for get request or getting a specific request or getting a specific details of a, sim of a single employee. This is the endpoint where the endpoint is API version one employee slash one. One means the ID of it, ID of the employee how do we use it something like this employee 719 okay so what i'll do is i'll use the same information here let's see employee 91 let's see if i get it no Okay, I'm using the endpoint wrong, it seems. Yeah, I think this is the full endpoint. And I guess this get request was not working the way it should work. If I even do this, yeah, I think this is the defect in the API. Oh, sorry, I'm using the get request, post request. So I'll do a send. Record does not found. None, send. Yeah, okay, so it's working now. If I do a 91, which as I was I created last time, see it is able to find it. Okay, so this endpoint is working. So I'll copy this, or rather I will only copy the endpoint, which is this, and I will go back to my step. I'll copy this here, and this 91 is what I have to change at runtime, because every time when we run this script, a new ID will be generated. And that will come automatically come inside this ID and I am going to do a simple parameterization which is plus ID. At runtime this ID gets um, appended with this endpoint and it will just hit it. And now I am validating. So once I do this in the single line I am validating with the status code which is returned as 200. So all I am doing is this status code is written as 200 and the data is returned like this right so i need to validate all this information perhaps again so i'm checking the status is success data is id is equal to the id then what else then employee name salary and age right so employee name is should be equal to what i'm sending from here now there's another catch which i will explain later then we have employee salary so i need to validate all this all this information so i will copy it then employee say employee name employee salary is what i need to validate employee age i need to validate then and by the way this is not an array so i will not use this here it's simple plain value 
okay so data dot id data dot employee name because since see why i remove this this information from here is because i did not get any array array here this is directly object so employee name employee salary employee age employee age is coming here as 23 because it should be exactly the what i'm sending from here this is 123 so this is what exactly i should put here one two three and i think that's it and this completes my test case now one important thing here which is every time i run this test case it will always try to attempt in for creation of this employee using the same values which can be a problem because the api has ha, should have this validation that the same employee should not be registered again and again it should give me analysis that record already exists since this is a dummy application i think it will still allow so we can perceive it as a defect wherein the M api in itself is asking is taking the values the same values duplicate values again and again but to make this test case perfect we need to so we are not right now uh, doing that negative test right so that negative test can be covered later in the next test case but in this test case since this is a positive test case what we want is every time this test case is executed we need a new value here and that value should be automatically gen automatically generated so salary and age can be same but name cannot be same so what we will do next is we'll try to write a method which will automatically generate the string a random string a random string here and that string is what we are going to send every time and that's what we are going to validate okay so what we are going to do next is to make this these this value dynamic so i have already already written a method for it which is get random string i'm going to copy this from a different location i'm going to paste it here at the bottom for now and what this does is this simply generates a random string based on the how many characters you would like to have in that particular string so if i pass here get random string and value as 5 it's going to give me a value a random string which has five characters in it there's the logic for it uh, it's no rocket science you can easily read what what it is so what i'll do now is i'm going to create a method here sorry a variable which is a string name i write it dynamic name or rather let me change it dynamic name and i'll call this method get which is get random string and i'm going to write here let's say eight this will give me a character this will give me a name having eight characters in it and i'm going to parameterize it in the sense i'm going to append sorry okay so maybe before that let me explain you how do you parameterize a string i mean it's very simple let's say you want to parameterize this information i mean whatever information you would like to parameterize or in, in, in any string what you do is you copy that section which you want to parameterize and first of all you put two double quotes then you go inside the double quotes and then add two plus signs and then you again go one step back inside plus signs and then you write your variable name so in this case it is this and that's how basically you parameterize that's a thumb rule you can remember it's very easy to do copy it so now body text has dynamic values but while validating i also need to take care but that whatever is it is generating i would need to validate it because every time i run this test case there will be a new value here so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to put here so instead of akash tyagi now i'm going to validate dynamic name and same thing i'm going to do here now we will try to run this but before we run it 
done it. Let me make some changes. Let me log some information. So right now there is one log here. Let me put a log at the top first. So right here first. Let me right here. Or instead of here, I will write things here. So right here. Body text. Sign test. Body text. This is the body text which I am printing. See, it's very important to print the information in your test case because when you something goes wrong and you want to check the report, and even something is right, and still you want to check the report, you need to see what happened. Because if you not have don't have these kind of statements, then in the console window, you will never get what exactly happened. All you get is pass or fail. You will not get what what was the body text, what was which was returned from the request, and sometimes you are interested in knowing that as well so it's always important to write these kind of logs for now we are using system.outprintln but in a real framework in a good framework you use some existing reporting mechanisms or log4j for example log4j extend report they all provides logger mechanism which you can use to log information for now i'm using system.outprintln so right now i'm printing this text here let's say i I also want to print what is in the header. What was the header which was sent? Header. This is header dot to string. Then response is I am already printing, I guess, here. So let me print it, remove from here. So once I get the response, I should print it then and there response received after post request and the response i should get dot as string and not two strings remember as string then the assertion assertion can be as it is and here i also would like to print what was returned when the given was sent so i will write here I will also save this part. Uh, when right here, response, I let it get response, response object, and now that let me do this response underscore get and i will use this here for the then so this will be for validation this is why how i am getting it in a response object and this is what i'm going to print as well so i'll write here the same statement which is this response receive after get request of the previous get request This is enough. Then the response dot get this just will do the validation. So now my test case is completed. This is my test case, which is like full fledged test case doing a positive flow. Uh, every time I run it, it will generate a new dynamic name and uh, it will just set the header. It will just do a post. It will then validate whether the information is right. Then it will do another validation, which is the get request of the ID, which was generated in the previous step of post. Now, if I run it, so if, uh, if I want to run this test case, I write here JUnit test. Oh, it's running all anyway. So this is the method I think which was executed, but it's failing. It's failing right now. Let's see what happened. So it's saying at some step, it is saying JSON path data dot zero name does not match. Expected was this, actual was this. Okay, so I think it failed. So let's say how to find out where it failed, right? So what I'll do is I'll go back to here, the bottom, then I'll trace. So this is the step at which it's everything started. So it is a step where it's failing. I'll double click on it. It will take me, take me to the point. So this is the point where it's failing. Why it's failing? Because it is trying to find, this is expected, this is actual. So it is, it is saying, that I am able to find expected. So expected is this, which is at runtime it got generated. 
but actual is null. So this is what it is coming as null. And it's also saying JSON path name does not match. Right. So data zero dot name. Somehow this is not being sent. This is not being uh, the rest assured is not able to find the value using this JSON path. Let's see what is in the console. If I go to console, see this is what is returned. So response received after post request status success data name. Okay. So you see the mistake here. The mistake is the which I actually corrected in the last validation, which is that there is a fourth this case. Yeah, this one. So the mistake here is this is not an array. What is returned here as a data is an object. There's no mention of a square bracket here. It's directly data dot name and I should not put data index here. So I will remove this, remove this and remove this. And now if I go and run this test case again, which one was that? Yeah. So if I run this test case, now it failed again so received response after request so this is what it has received so body text sent was this so this is see if you see here this is a new name it is created so every time it is creating a new name header is this response received after post request the post request was success data received was this id was in it as 82 response received after get request status success data name is this this is coming as same this is coming as same everything is coming is coming all right but what is the error then so xml path status does not match match expected success actual is this what line it failed let me investigate so it has failing at the response side which is body status equal to success so status is coming is success data dot id 82 mm. why well, it's filling on this line okay let me investigate give me a minute okay so i investigated and turns out that it has some defect the api has defect that is once we create something from us assured uh, it is not able to hit this and it is still returning uh, not success message so uh we'll the test case the sequence of test case will remain the same the test case will fail because there is an active defect in the api but the validations the structure of how to create a post request or create an employee using a post should remain same and you can uh, start with the uh, more test cases so if we go about creation of more test cases so one positive test case is completed what we can do next is we can create a few more negative test cases so when i talk about negative test cases you can do many things here so public void i'm just going to write the definition so public void t05 1 2 3 4 this should be a 5 this is 5 then this should be a 6 this is 6 post negative send incorrect name now this is the post request where you have to send incorrect name and the server should sh should say not successful then similarly incorrect salary or you can say negative salary which is again not allowed then here you can write here write negative age so incorrect name that means you are sending some integer value in the name it is not correct name if you're sending negative values in the salaries minus something which is again not true minus age again not true then you can start you can send
then uh, so five six seven test case is this this is the eight test case ninth so this is for send special characters so this is how you are sending some special characters to various fields and that should not also that should not be allowed as well i'll just give you an example how you will go and create a negative test case so what you will do is perhaps you will just copy the same steps here till this point till this point and i will paste it here so now this time this is like send incorrect name so inside dynamic name instead of this i'm going to put some integers so i'm going to write one two three four or rather some minus values right now this should not be allowed so once we send this as a post in the create the validation i should be doing is status not equal to from where this not is coming sorry so this not and i don't need this because the body will not be this so the status should not be a status as success and uh, this not is coming again this is a hemcrest method so it's coming from here hemcrest dot matches it's coming from here so i'm doing this not equal to success. So this is how basically I'm going to write all the other steps. This part will always remain same. I mean, the only thing will is, is I think you have to change these values. And as you change it, you need to validate what's happening. And before you do it from here, you also go and check it in the uh, postman. So before you write a test case, it's important that you go and check in the, check the same thing from the postman and you will also find some defects in this because this is a dummy api they have not created it for all the negative cases i think they have not covered it but still if i go here and if i let's see uh if i go back sorry not this one this this is a get i will go and do a post details this is what I'm trying to send and go to postman here in the body section. I'm going to put raw. Okay. It's already there. Then sorry, I need to copy the endpoint actually. So this is the endpoint. I will copy it here. And now instead of this, I'm writing something like this. Let's see what happens. You see there's some error message coming it's not taking it that's for sure now if i go and put some special characters some special characters here it should send it should also not but but the point is i should not get these kind of error messages i should be getting a server should, should reply in a proper json format saying it is not allowed so this nonetheless it's a defect and same thing you need to check here so it is not successful you can check instead of checking the not success you can also check that there is a status is coming as failed status should be coming as failed or something okay so these kind of tests what you, uh, is what you can write for testing this api in a negative sense